Hey what is happening everyone and welcome back to another video and are you sick of seeing the screen every time you change your battery? Or perhaps your PSP is having some weird power issues? Or even possibly you're getting some severe battery drain despite having known good batteries in your PSP. When you leave your PSPs turned off and sitting around. For the first problem of setting up your date every time you remove the battery, that is fixed by replacing the supercapacitor, which is commonly mistaken as the CMOS battery, but really is just a supercapacitor that charges up when you have power flowing through the PSP. And for the other two fixes, well, you can either do the same thing or simply just remove them. Yep, you heard me right, you can just simply remove them if you're possibly having some weird battery drain issues and you know that your clock capacitor is not keeping time and possibly fix one of the weird power issues where your PSP is not turning on at times, which usually happens with PSP 3000 models. An old defective clock capacitor is a common point of failure if you ever encounter those issues. These are pretty cheap to get your hands on, I'll leave links for them in the description down below. And without further ado, let me quickly show you how to remove them and how to install them. So let's get into it. All right, so right in front of me, I have all three motherboards disassembled. We have the 1000, 2000, and 3000. And if you don't know how to disassemble your PSP, well, you can go ahead and watch my videos for the 1000 model where I have a disassembled video, the 2000 where I have a disassembly slash reassembly video. As for the 3000, I'm actually working on the video for that, so stay tuned. There are a couple different revisions and I'm documenting all the differences so you can know exactly what to expect when you go ahead and disassemble your 3000 model. All right, so once you have your PSP motherboard disassembled, there is one thing you want to take care of and that would be your UMD sensors on these various motherboards. Just be careful that it doesn't snag on anything, it's very fragile, and it's present on all three models, so just be careful. The next thing to note is that the 1000 and 2000 models share the exact same supercapacitor, which look a little something like this. As for the 3000 model, well, that's what it looks like. And here's what it looks like side by side for the other two. And finally, like I said at the start of the video, if you're running into weird power issues, which usually happen on 3000 models, or you're getting some very weird battery drain, even though you have a battery that you have tested on a second PSP, well, you can just simply go ahead and remove the supercapacitor, and that could very well just fix things. And how you know if your battery is dead? Well, if you go ahead and power your PSP through a charger or a battery, it can be either on or off for at least five minutes. And then when you go ahead and remove the battery and put it back in after like 10 seconds, and it's showing you the set time screen, then your supercapacitor is cooked. In my opinion, it should keep it for at least half an hour, an hour, and that's plenty of time. So you can imagine if you have a faulty supercapacitor, it could very well drain your battery while your PSP is off, and that's no good. But of course, I don't have any concrete information on that just yet. Stay tuned for the battery maxing video sometime in the future. We will actually go ahead and save the supercapacitors from these units and use them for the testing in that video. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and finally get started with step one, and that is to safely remove the supercapacitor. And for this one, you'll need my favorite tool, the flush cutter, and my occasional favorite tool, the razor blade. And this one will work for both the 1000 and 2000 models. So basically, here's what we have here. We have the supercapacitor, which as you can see, is not doing too well. It's kind of spewing out of its guts. The supercapacitor is the round part. Then we have a clip that is on top, and it's held down by three little points. So my method of actually removing these is to actually get the razor blade, get a nice sharp one, and of course, be extra careful. And what you want to do is get right under the edge. If it doesn't work, you can try the other side. Just be mindful of all these chips that you don't accidentally chip them, because if you do, uh, it's GG. Time to get a new motherboard. Unless you're lucky, but you'll find out once you put it back together. And uh, what I ended up chipping is actually my razor blade. Not exactly the right one to use, but it works. So there we go. Now if you take a look, we've got a nice little edge right there. And what we want to do now is to go ahead and use our flush cutters, grab it and slowly push into the motherboard while you actually turn it, until you break off all three clips. At this stage, it's very crucial that you actually take extra, extra care because what could happen if you go too far, and sometimes even before that, you can accidentally rip the pad here. Now it's not the end of the world, I have recovered from that, as the traces are pretty simple on this one. So now I'm gonna leave this one as is and try to fold the actual capacitor forward, just a tiny bit, while again pushing inside. We don't wanna rip the pad. And why I recommend you actually open it up like so before you go ahead and desolder it, I'm having you do that step as it will be much easier to actually transfer the heat when these two parts are separated. The other reason, of course, for the off chance that you suspect that you have an issue with your 1000 or 2000 models with this specific type of supercapacitor and you want to remove it but you don't have a soldering iron and you want to see if that fixes it, well, that is one way of doing it. What I would do is to actually just remove the top and put a piece of tape between these two ends just to see if that fixes it and you can continue the job later on. Oh yeah. And if you're wondering how to solder, well, I've got some plans for those, so stay tuned. So let's go ahead and add some flux, just a tiny bit, make things a whole lot easier. Get our iron nice and hot, apply some solder, grab our tweezers, and basically go at it. There we go. Hopefully that stops it from moving around. Now for this one, you could try heating it from both sides, the front as well as the back. 
kind of help it out. And there we go. Now we go ahead and grab our wick, clean things up. And of course, do my usual cleanup. And this should be the end result. Now we go ahead and add a tiny bit of flux to these pads, tiny bit of solder. Place a new one right on top, and while holding it into place, you want to go ahead and heat up these pads. Once one side grips, you can go ahead and flow it with some solder, followed by some more flux, move it around, and you're pretty much done. Now we go ahead and do the classic cleanup. And the end result should look a little something like this. Again, this is the same method you use for the 2000 model. And for the sake of a complete video, we'll do the same for the 2000 model, but slightly different to see if we can desolder it without having to rip it apart. The placement is slightly different, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. And let's go ahead and try to remove it without ripping it. Let's try this side first. Tiny bit of solder. There we go. All right, cool, perfect. There you go. Well, that's the second method of doing it. Drop the new one in. There's already enough flux from before. And we're pretty much done. Of course, make sure that the super capacitor is not touching anything else around it, such as these tiny SMDs, even though it might already be linked to it. And here's the final result. And finally, we have the 3000 model with its unique supercapacitor. So let's try with flux. No need to rip it apart. The ripping apart of it is very similar to the other ones. You need to get run under this little edge, peel this one side open, peel the battery out, but it's a bit more risky as you could possibly rip the pads if you're not lucky. So let's see how it goes if we try the soldering iron. If it doesn't work, we'll uh, rip it out. Now at this point, you can probably tell that it's not as easy as the other ones. And that's because both pads are actually under the supercapacitor, which is super annoying. But we're not giving up. When in doubt, add more flux and more solder. All right, so it's slightly lifted. And what I could try is my solder plunger. Basically, when I load it up and press the button, any melted solder should get sucked out. Very nice. And then when I click it back, it's going to spit out whatever solder that was there. What I could do here is add some more flux, get my solder wick, and just wick up everything that I could. I think that should be enough for this side. We'll come back to it. We'll flip it around. Again, be mindful of the sensor. I'm out of flux again. All right, so let's take a pause here and show you what I've got so far. I thought the contact was actually being separated from the pad, but instead it was actually the contact bending upwards. So if I continued doing it, I could have easily ripped apart the pad. So we'll just carefully go at it from this side. I'm gonna grab it with my small pair of pliers and see what happens. Problem is, I think my tip is way too small. I don't have enough heat and enough contact. So, so let's go back to my tactic, just a whole lot of solder. And there we go. Clean things up. All right, so it's all cleaned up. And for reference, here's what it looks like on the bottom. So you can get an idea of what it looks like. Now for the replacement, it's gonna be pretty much the same exact thing as we did before, except this time, we're just gonna lay it on top on a nice flat, clean surface. I'll apply some flex to the sides. And I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it like this. And we're gonna start off with the inner side as it is the easier, safer option. Just by touching it, the solder automatically goes under it. And now it's secure on that side. Now let's go ahead and do the other side. But one thing you need to take note of, and that is how close the edge of the actual capacitor here is to the bottom pad, because we actually don't want to bridge these two. If we do, it's basically a short circuit and a whole lot can go wrong. So what I recommend is you actually use the smallest tip that you may have. Something like this could be pretty handy. We can go ahead and tap and hold until your solder flows through under, and then it can ease out. And of course, to confirm with the 3000 model, we can use a multimeter to see if there's any continuity between the two polarities. But I'm gonna try to do it anyways with this tip and see how it goes. And I think that did the trick. All right, 
So inspecting it visually, we can see that it's not touching. And to confirm, we can grab the multimeter, switch it to continuity mode, and see if we get any beeps. If we touch these two contacts together, it will beep, meaning there's a short circuit. Just keep in mind when you're doing this test that this entire body is linked to this inner side. So if we do a test like this, it will beep. So when we go ahead and try it out, we can see that there is no continuity. You know what? Here's a bonus round. We're going to go ahead and remove this one on the 3000 without the use of a soldering iron. And I'm making sure I'm including this in this video because it's actually the most important one as the 3000 for some reason has the most amount of power issues that are related to the clock capacitor. So let me go ahead and remove it without the use of a soldering iron. And like I said before, your PSP can in fact function without the super clock capacitor. So if you remove it, you can leave it removed. And the only thing you'll have to deal with is having to set your time every time you remove your battery, which you could bypass by plugging it into the charger, removing the battery, changing the battery and putting it back in. Anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and show you how to remove it without the use of a soldering iron. So just like before, we're grabbing our blade and getting a little edge on it. Again, you're pushing in and rolling out like a can of tuna until it looks a little something like this. Now, at this point, you could do two things. You can actually tape it, so you can put a piece of tape and try to wrap it under the CMOS. But basically, you grab your piece of tape and try to get it under the capacitor and then just basically wrap it in, like so. And then you can fold this back on top or just snip it, only if you have a good sharp pair of flush cutters. And basically, you can just leave it like this. And the reason for this is you can actually disconnect the capacitor without risking further damage to your motherboard if you're too scared of completely removing it without the use of a soldering iron. Basically, just peel the top off, cover it with something like tape, so one side is no longer making contact, should fix your PSP3000 weird power issues. And again, if you have a multimeter, you can actually test it out and see if these two parts are making contact. And as you can see, they are not. So, we're good here. And that's really about it for this video. If you got the right tools and a little bit of experience, you can easily pull this off. And for those who just want to test out and see if their PSP can be revived by removing or disabling the supercapacitor in the fourth method that I've shown you, where you go ahead and peel the top off, tape it, and then close it back in to basically break the circuit, that's something that everyone should be able to do, so long that you know how to disassemble your PSP, which again, I've got a video for it coming up very soon. And for those who don't know how to solder, well, I've got a few things planned out, so stay tuned for that as well. If you're wondering how long the supercapacitor should last, probably a couple hours, which I did end up testing out by charging these for around 5 hours, then I left them unplugged for another 5 hours, and then I was quickly testing them out real quick to see if I've got the time screen, and I only got that screen a couple hours later, which again, should be plenty of time for you to swap out your battery. Usually for 1000-2000 models, it's not an issue even if your supercapacitor is dead, it usually doesn't cause any major problems, however for the 3000 model, it's been known to have various different issues. For example, you can plug in your PSP, it turns on, and then you turn it off, it doesn't turn on for at least another two hours. And with all that being said, that is all for this video. So thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.